Pat, we're live again. Bro, why are you always do that <laughs> shit? That shit annoying as Why well. are you always on your phone before, before we start? Before the live? Well, you were just on your phone. Let me fix Nobody my heard shirt. you, exactly. Ow. What's good? Intro the podcast. I'm tired of introing the podcast. You're, actually, your intros are very ass. You think they are? Yeah. All right, listen to this. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Crash Dummies Podcast with Pat and Mike. It really should be Mike and Pat. I don't know how I let Pat trick me into putting his name first, but Mike and Pat or Pat and Mike, however it rolls off your tongue. Welcome to episode four. You sound like you work for at and <laughs> <laughs> This is Mike. <laughs> and i have your card bro at&t we try to trick us like it's not no overseas people these companies like it's, <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like the i'll do an african accent since i'm african so it doesn't seem it like it's racist, assaulting yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it'd be like hello my name is uh my name is michael esiobu um welcome to at&t like didn't i click english i'm like your name is not <laughs> michael <laughs> oh my speak God. up toby <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> welcome to crash dummies i already intro the podcast Pat and mike i just wanted to do it better because i do the intros better oh my goodness you know what i'm getting at? A, a lot of people keep asking us and they're getting mad people think there's a part two to your to your nigerian boarding school story people on tiktok think that people not on people. tiktok <laughs> yeah. right people not in real life <laughs> that's their real life not to be able to listen to the whole podcast Right. So I want to ask you, just give us some day to day stuff from Nigerian boarding school, because we, we've heard about the punishment aspect of it. What actually goes on in the boarding school? Like, what's the day to day? What's school? We know you guys get one meal. You know, we, we know it's the <laughs> Hunger Games. And you guys are dish or six already. We understand that part. You guys got to switch meals. Hey, bro, give me your dinner for your breakfast. That shit. So... We want to know, like, what's the day to day? What time y'all waking up? Woke up around five thirty six, and then we do um, praise and worship. So we do like a song. So he'd be like, and they start singing some type of Christian song. Was it was it Wade in the Water? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a song we used to sing. Wade in the Water, <laughs> children. Go ahead. Oh. You can skip the praise, but what's up? Yeah, pray. I'm going yeah, to school yeah. after you pray, right? Yeah. And okay. then um we come downstairs. No, first of all, we take a shower. So we used to sho showers. Mm, they didn't really work though. Like, okay. It's so like we, a school like uh So we filled a bucket up with water. And then you had a little lion. I swear. <laughs> we filled the bucket up with water and we used a pail and you just kinda get yourself wet. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bro, <What? laughs> you gotta stop this. <laughs> but, Go ahead, I quit. I don't um, want you to finish this story. Go ahead. <laughs> you get yourself wet with the water, and then <laughs> Go ahead, bro. I let it go. <laughs> this show one pass for the show. Come and on. then um, take a shower, uh, get your uniform ready. He give you like two uniforms. Come downstairs, um, eat breakfast. Then you walk for boarding school students. You walk over past the little gate. And then across the street and then to another, uh, into the school grounds. And then we do a morning assembly. And with morning assemblies, everybody lined up in rows, like from class to class. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. oldest kids to young kids. You guys yeah. did that in America yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, hey, chill out. We did that over here. Yeah. <laughs> Line up. So then you, you do like uniform checks. So you have to wear like white socks. So then if you didn't have like, you had the wrong color socks sometimes or your tie was, they'll like pull you out. And then you probably have to like, I think the worst punishment sometimes is like um, cutting grass with like scissors. What type of shit is that? Yeah. Or you have to do like some type of stationary, um, some stationary movements and just stay up in the hot sun sometimes. Let me show you one. Hold on. If you're on video, then you can see it. But audio, you probably can't see it. So they pretty much had us. Like that? <laughs> There was some freaks type <laughs> shit. <that. laughs> and you have to like, uh, you have to stay in that position. But um, went to classes, normal classes. It's not that, it's not that, not, not that much different. That was just a funny story. The last podcast. Yeah. Um, it's but, like, it's like, 
it's not slavery. It's more of like a relaxed slavery. But they teach you, like, at least in actual slavery, they weren't really. Yeah, they didn't let. Them, they didn't want you they, to read. They didn't let us read books. <laughs> they didn't want you to read an actual one. But um, yeah, that's that was that was my boarding school. I was there for like two and a half years. Two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half the long way, huh? My mom said I shouldn't expose her on how we actually got to to Nigeria. Yeah, my my mom called me too. <laughs> that's crazy. My mom was like, "Don't be telling people I beat you." <laughs> <laughs> bro my mom tricked me to go you know my mom tricked me to go Ni- Ni- nigeria yeah my mom, i remember you telling me that story. mom if you listen to this it's okay i i forgive you and it's okay now. we both forgive you but we were really going there for something else and then we got there i was in school first of all i was in high school and stuff like that and then my dad was and we're like hey we're going to nigeria next week i'm like oh okay he's like i was like i have finals next week he's like yeah i talked to your teachers and mind you, I'm like, my dad never talked to my teachers like that. Because <laughs> I've never, they never really went to like report card pickup and stuff like that. And then we get to my, we, we started taking like, uh, my dad used to give us extra work to do, right? right? And so we got extra work and stuff like that. And then I started to realize, we started to realize um, after the fact that the tests we're taking, he was giving us, those were actually for, um, those are actually for entrance exams for Nigerian schools. So we we're taking entrance exams without even knowing. So he was tricking y'all. Yeah, he tricked us. So then we get um we get home. We get um to Nigeria and so we get to Nigeria, yeah. So we get to Nigeria and then we're there for like a week. And then my mom says, Hey, you guys are not coming back to America. She calling you and saying this? No, no, or? she was there with us. Oh, she's there in your face? Yes. Yeah, so she was like, you guys aren't coming back to America. And when I was leaving America, I was leaving Chicago, I was telling my friends, I right, see y'all next week. I'm going to be back in like two weeks and stuff like that. You ain't come back for two and a half years? <laughs> I didn't come back for three years, really. Three years? <laughs> God damn. I just disappeared. That's how it is like <laughs> when you got court. Like, All right, bro. I'll see you after. Like, damn, bro. My mom told when my mom told us. My brother had my older brother has suspicions. He was like, "Man, this does not feel right." (laughs) We're on the plane. We're like, "Wait, this does not feel right." Because we haven't been at that point. We, me and my older brother, were born in Nigeria, but at that point, we hadn't been back for like um, three years, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, No, 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 I said three years. We hadn't been back in like fourteen years at that point, probably. So, like. So y'all wasn't real Nigerians. We're real Nigerians, but nah, we're like y'all wasn't to. real. But then we got to get it out the mud. We got to Nigeria. My mom told us, broke the news to us, and I felt like that my life. I just you know, <laughs> you know, see, like you ever have a near death experience. You feel like yeah, that's what it felt like. I felt like my life just flashed before my eyes. Yeah, like, bro. Like damn, my life is really over. She dropped you off at prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, but. Honestly, at a, bro, at a, at a slavery resort, <laughs> they're gonna wonder why there's a weedy box right there. First of all, we're gonna I, talk about that later. Did you get that backpack off? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, a ba- it's a backpack, a box of weedies. This could go here. This is. We're not even gonna do any cuts. We're gonna. We just show you the realness of us. The weedies can go right here, right? We're actually talking about the weedies. Actually, but yeah, that was my um, Nigeria. That's how I got there, but there probably be other stories that come pop up in my head and <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> pop in my head and the, the fans want to know. <laughs> yes, the ones. So the reason that uh, I, most of you guys, I don't know if I, I don't know the demographic that came from TikTok, but we had a couple of videos go pretty viral on there, and <laughs> it's at, it's at a hundred thousand views. Yeah, right so now. my last Nigeria story, everybody was saying that <laughs> it sounded eerily. Obviously, you guys heard it, but it sounded eerily too. Uh, being a slave or something wild like that, but <laughs> he was a slave. <laughs> he found out he was a slave. It was like a therapy session, like halfway through, and you're like, "Oh shit, <laughs> I was a slave." Oh man. All right, so I had a question for you. That's good. Okay, what do you think happens after you die? Me? Um, I don't know. I, for me, I feel like just heaven and hell. Okay. Yeah. So what happens when you get to hell because you're going to hell <laughs> Bro, don't say that i mean you broke every, every <laughs> commandment no bro you ask for forgiveness and whatnot when at the gates 
<laughs> you walk up to the guy, hey, they just show you everything you did wrong. Listen. Then you start scratching your head like, did I do that? They were smoking that before I got there. How the hell? <laughs> you ever heard of peer pressure? <laughs> I did what? I was broke when I stole that. They, what? This video of that? Y'all got video of everything up here, huh? <laughs> so 4K, y'all already, 8K. <laughs> so y'all know about the squirrel I ran over, huh? <laughs> I was supposed to save him. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, but um I hope I hope that's the way. You know, I'm similar to you. I believe yeah. there's a heaven i don't i don't know if i believe there's a hell but i believe there. i believe there's a heaven some type of afterlife but my biggest fear is that another religion is correct <laughs> you know what i mean like you die and you'd be like holy shit we do get reincarnated <laughs> and you like and it's like you the you the thing that like irritated you the most like i hate squirrels yeah so i feel like the the reincarnation guy to be like uh you a squirrel now and i'm like fuck <laughs> And I'm running up a damn tree every time somebody come near me. Like that's the that's the wild part about religion. That's why I like I'm not really a a religion proponent, right? Right. I'm more of just of a believing in a higher power. And um Facts. but the thing about religion is like there's Muslim, there's Christianity and Hinduism, right? Right. Over billions of people are wrong about something, right? Somebody wrong. <laughs> Somebody's wrong. <laughs> Somebody wrong. <laughs> and then it's like it you think about it as like some people are born like if I'm born a Christian, right? I had, I had, if people are everybody saying, "Oh, you're a Christian, you're a Christian," Same. you're gonna believe. Yeah. But people are born Muslims too, right? right. I have a lot of friends that are more, born Muslim, and a Some lot of people, parts of Nigeria, like the place I lived in in Nigeria, is a lot of Muslims there. You could be born anything, whatever your parents are. Exactly, at, at and the you're, moment. and especially you're, you don't have no influences by like the outside world as much. It's like right. you're gonna be that. So it's like, is it that person's fault that they believe in what they believe in? Right. But. Yeah, I don't, I don't even want to get too deep in that. But yeah, we, yeah, we're not gonna get too deep. <laughs> but that's it is what it is, right? So saying that, how do you think you will go out? So how do you think you will die? Damn, I don't. Even, this is just got morbid. Yeah, that's why I want. I don't want to think how. I, obviously, I hope. If, it, I hope it'd be of old age. It, if somebody <sighs> had a gun to your head and be like, "Guess how you die?" They know how you die, and if you're correct, you survive. What's your answer? Old age. Old age. Yeah. You got to be more specific than that. I don't think anybody dies directly of just oh um, he I feel was like my old. heart stops my heart was stopped oh, heart problems shit. yeah yeah something yeah. like that. You eat a lot of like a lot of bacon yeah you eat a lot of bacon. <laughs> I ate some bacon this morning you did yeah a bacon egg and cheese sandwich every morning. Yeah, I don't know how you do that like the bacon is not enough. <laughs> You're not gonna get me this episode. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Anyways, um oh man. I just wait. I'm just wait till I start feeling sick and just start doing some like wild shit. That's when you. Um, <laughs> that's when you get the bravery. Yeah, I'll probably be like 81 and be like, "Damn, my chest hurt." <laughs> I'm about to go join a gang today. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, 86 year old crip ain't he crip. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be a real rolling sixty. <laughs> everybody want to be an old crip oldest crip mm. <laughs> you think the the really old gang members like the bloods and the crips and whatever other gangs are, are shout out to y'all though but uh, <laughs> do you think they be beefing still no nah, or, think... or you think they have a little bit more we we in a, like a, a a new day and age of like um gang members like you could like going to about streets streets now. streets yeah. right you got <laughs> blocks you got, you got, you know, a, a crip in the blood that's like blood cousins mm-hmm. and they closer than just some like random blood off the street. Yeah. So it's not like size anymore. It's like where they, you know, not saying people should be in gangs, but some people don't have a choice. Yeah. Some people I think gotta, I, I was always too afraid to, to be in a gang. That Bro, I, that first ass whooping. <laughs> I was always too afraid. I want to tell uh, I want to wear do-rags. Everybody, if you have African dad, you already know they're strict as hell, but... I had um, we had some do rags from the uh, beauty supply. My dad hated when we wore do rags because a lot of like people in gangs wore do rags. So we wear a do rag. <laughs> One time I was outside. Uh, what type of? What you mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> a lot of people in gangs wear do rags. No, no. Back then, like the people that were in ah, gangs in Chicago, yeah, yeah. they all just just wear do rags for it's, sure. Even for though sure. it wasn't like the symbolic, obviously, but it was just symbolic with being facts, in the gang. Facts, facts. And when facts. you have a foreign parent, that's what they think, right? Ah, yeah, I get you. But. So one time I had my gray do-rag on 
and I'm outside with my brother because I, I didn't wear it outside. So I, when I left the house, I just had it in my pocket. And you know the do-rags, you got to tie it up in a mirror. So mm -hmm. I, my do-rag was probably sloppy as hell that day. Right. Lying to <laughs> yeah. the back, going down. So I'll, I'm walking outside. All I hear is, Michael. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were scared as hell. I was like, <sighs> turned around, it was my dad. I used to see his finger whack. I'm yeah. What do you have on your head? I was like, uh, I had a do rag. I was, <laughs> I was like, I had a do rag on my head. He's like, who do you think you are? You are, you are fifty cents. <laughs> you know the thing about African people or, or, or foreign people. Sometimes like they always name symbolic everything. Like do rags is just symbolic with fifty cent and or tank top fifty cent and Snoop Dogg and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that was just funny. That was just like. I would get in trouble for the little thing. I couldn't wear. I couldn't have fake tattoos. I didn't have fake tattoos. My dad didn't even know about my actual like. I got my tattoos when I was like sophomore. Dad didn't know for like three years. It wasn't like I was hiding it from him. But, it was just one of those things where I'm not. And then one time we're at uh, literally like probably like <laughs> six months ago we're at uh, at dinner, and I was I took him out for dinner and stuff like that. And he I forgot I had a short sleeve on. And I was eating. He was like, "Hmm, when did you get tattoos?" I <laughs> said so like maybe like three years. I've been had these for three years. It's like, hmm, okay. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's one of those things. I was like, all right, I probably didn't even have to be that much, that much afraid of him being like, I have tattoos. Now I have a full sleeve. I don't even know if he knows I have my chest and like up to here. Right. <laughs> he parents, probably, parents put that fear in you, man. Yeah, for sure. When they tell you not to do something, it sticks with you. Even after you're like a grown person, yeah. you don't even realize it. You'd be like, why don't I do this? And it's exactly, it's just like I, you just I don't because I grew up and I was taught not to do this. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how like parenting affects you later on in life. So. Yeah, but yeah. So if I got a question for you, go ahead. Another question. I just got a bunch of questions. Today. Yeah, come on. Okay. I feel like I'm getting interviewed. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good interview. If you were, if you had a time machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it took you back to when you were 14 years old. Mm -hmm. With all the knowledge you have now. I was in Nigeria. Okay, 14 <laughs> years old. Okay. With all the knowledge you have now, what would you do? No, I wasn't in Nigeria. Um, I think I'd just get ahead of like the social media game. Right, you like that's what I was thinking. I'll create TikTok. Yeah, like I was just been content creating. Like if I didn't have like the smarts and like they said just the knowledge and not like knowing the future. Yeah, but just having the smarts and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, I mean, right? Because I, other than that, I just play the lottery. You just play, <laughs> play the lottery. They'll get. They probably find a way to get take you out though. If you you probably only got. You probably only gonna win one lottery. You just got to wait like, to the billion dollar one. That's it. Cause it's like the butterfly effect. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I would. I would just go content heavy like just become a content creator just be like the pioneer of that and know like the trends when they come and go and stuff like that um yeah and kind of what we're doing now right. is just hopping in the content game right. i kind of been in the content game for like yeah, you've been in the content game for like four or five years but even in high school bro i used to um i used to build uh instagram pages i used to build instagram pages we yeah, and it was some scams i'm the first time <laughs> so the first time me and mike became friends on facebook probably that week i had 50 requests <laughs> all from people from africa <laughs> trying to find out my social security number <laughs> i'm african prince bro the, the funny thing about that is when i was in nigeria i actually saw the place where the nigerians the night some of the nigerian scammers be because it's a big thing in nigeria called 419 it's just scammers. a bunch of them on their computers they're in the internet cafe going crazy going crazy <laughs> getting them getting them numbers I, hello my name is hakeem from i need you to send me hakeem. 50 dollars so i can get a billion dollars bro if people get scammed by that type of stuff they deserve to get scammed you deserve it at this point there's no way you can give somebody money any, for more money one time <laughs> one time i was in the car with my cousin, I don't know if I should say his name. Nah, you can you can say it and then you can see I can bleep it out <laughs> if you don't if he doesn't want it to be. Don't say it. Just don't go ahead. Say it. Screw it. He know who he is. Yeah, give so, him a fake name. Huh? Give him a fake name. I call him uh Poe. Poe. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was in the car with Poe, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, "Bro, you got twenty five dollars." You know, mind you, this is in college. $25 yeah. is a big deal. Like, what the hell you need $25 for? He was like, this dude said if I give him 50 he would turn it into 1000 for me. And I'll split it with you. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, just do your $25. <laughs> 
<laughs> and see what he say. So I guess the dude like made him go buy like a prepaid card. Yeah. To like give him money. So what? What? And then he ended up just taking the money. So he Romaine sent him the prepaid card. <laughs> Is that his real name? Oh shit. <laughs> Romain, you stupid ass. <laughs> Romain's actually a really successful businessman right now. <laughs> yeah, that's the crazy part. So, so that's, that's the, the crazy part. part. And he actually and he actually sh- sells insurance. So what's funny is that he is salesman and he got gypped like this. <laughs> you dumbass. So <laughs> so he so the dude took his prepaid card and basically just took his money yeah. after telling him that he was gonna flip it. Long story short. Mm. And it's crazy because you don't think because these people are talking such big money. They're talking fifty thousand, a hundred thousand. Yeah. You don't think they make you think that they don't need your twenty five dollars. Mm-hmm. You like if this dude is talking about fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, he's done this before. Yeah. So you you assume that he has all this money. So you don't think he would steal twenty five or fifty dollars from you. And that's the scheme of the thing. Yeah. So yeah, if you fall for that shit, you deserve it. You shouldn't be falling for no damn pyramid scheme or those bank things like, hey, anybody would chase bank. I got 5000 for you. It's bro, like, that's the worst thing. They're going to take out a loan in your li- name. It's literally greed, bro. Like, if somebody says, hey, I am a prince from Africa, please send me $100 and then I will send you back a million dollars in my family heirlooms or some shit like that. Why? Why would a prince from Africa need you to send the money if they have that much money? Like, doesn't people still fall for that type of stuff? I feel like there's some scams that you might, they might get you and stuff like that. They'd be a little bit unique with the scams. Mm-hmm. But the 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 uh, the most unique one I saw was this uh, rapper. I forgot his name. He's like he's a, he's semi famous now, so he doesn't scam anymore. But he's like the best one he used to do was he used to pay girls for their accounts. Mm-hmm. So he would pay a girl, like he would give a girl, um, you know, $300. Yeah. He'd be like, just go make another account. I'm mm-hmm. paying $300 for your Instagram account. You only have 200 followers. Like you're just a regular person giving you $250 for your account. Mm-hmm. Right? They take it. And then they take that, you know, and it's a, you know, attractive girl. They take that and they go to these like older men, these thirsty guys on the internet yeah. and be like, uh, fly me out. You know what I mean? Oh, shit. So they're getting free flights. You know, oh, my phone's broke. They're getting free iPhones. And there's dude, there's dudes on the other side of these accounts. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if you don't meet anybody in person, like... Bro, somebody sh- tried to scam me. I think I posted on my story of the dude that tried to scam me into um, into doing uh, getting my account verified. Oh, yeah, yeah, So I he DM'd that. me and said, hey, Mike. He has like 200 followers. Fake picture, obviously. I like cross half reference it but um he's like hey mike um i can get you verified on instagram i said why don't you get yourself insta uh verified on instagram first <laughs> and then he was like oh no there's no need because i'm not i'm not looking to get verified i was like all right i'm not the waste of dude's time all right let me know what you have he's like um yeah it's, i said how much does it cost he said 66 dollars and i started being super gullible i was like oh really that's it i thought it was gonna be way more expensive than that mm-hmm. and it was like i was like where should i send it he said you can send it through cash app I said, wait, can you send me $2 first so I can make sure you're not trying to scam me? He was like, why would I send you $2? I just want to make sure this is legit. Just send me $2 and um, and I'll send it right back and then I'll send you $68. So he was like, are you, sh-? he said, all right, just know that Instagram is monitoring this message right now. So if you, try, if you don't send it back, <laughs> he said, if you don't send it back, oh, your account will get deleted. I was like, oh, really? No, 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 I, I don't want to scam you. I just want to make sure it's legit. Right. I'm like, you're trying to sell me something. So why should I um, Why should I just send you money if I don't know if it's legit? Mm-hmm. So then he's like, all right, I'm going to send it right now. This man sends the, t- I, I didn't even have cash, so I created a new cash up account. He sent me $2. <laughs> oh, you had time. You yeah, created I had, cash up? Yeah. So he sent me I got the, time today, cuz. He sent me the $2 and I blocked his ass. <laughs> <laughs> so he probably was like, <laughs> it's just like, it, it's the petty two. And I, I was like, and I, I texted him, I said, hey, thanks for uh, some ice cream. I appreciate that. <laughs> I was like, thanks, big. Ho-. I was like, thanks, big dog. But yeah, you got buddy ass fired. This boss right behind me. Like, how the hell you lose two dollars? <laughs> oh man, smack him on the back of his head. How the fuck you lose two dollars? <laughs> scared You gotta. Your ass about to get fired, boy. That boy had a quarter to me. I just. 
<laughs> he, he in the negative. How you, get, <laughs> you know, everybody looking at him like, boy. He, <laughs> Uh, that's funny bro that is terrible yeah. you can't make commission off negative two dollars <laughs> uh, that is terrible yeah okay so did you hear about the naomi osaka thing yeah about like her sitting out of um tournaments because of mental health reasons right so Na- naomi osaka who i don't know if she still is uh the number one she's the number one still number yeah. one number one tennis player in the world even if she's not ranked number one, she's like physically number one. Physically like, yeah. number one, for sure, for sure. So she's been stepping away from the game. I think she didn't participate in the last two majors. Yeah, I think the first major she stepped out was the French Open. Because the French is the clay clay court. So yeah, I think it was the French Open first. And, and then and there's recently... W- when Wimbledon, she didn't do Wimbledon, either. Wimbledon, yeah. And there's some other small ones in between, but yeah. So yeah, so Naomi didn't participate in the French Open and Wimbledon. And it's because she wants to take time away for mental health Mm -hmm. and she's been you know how like players uh in the nba nfl more likely in uh, in the nba and mlb they're they're day-to-day with a sprinkle aim yeah or day-to-day with a a hamstring strain Mm -hmm. you know she wants athletes to start getting time off for mental health yeah so it's been this big debate of like athletes with who have mental health issues, almost every human being has something, Mm -hmm. you know, off with them mentally at like some point in their life or at some aspect of their life. All right. Let me challenge you then in this, because I'm, I'm, I'm just going to play devil's advocate. The things I'm going to say, don't mean I actually believe. Okay. I don't actually, that's not where I stand on it, but I guess somebody would say like, so mental health is something you really can't physically see. Right. Correct. So it's something that's inside. So it's like, some athletes may want to use that and say, hey, I want to get out talking to reporters, even though, especially like in the NBA, I'm not sure about NFL, but like some of them are paid to talk. Like that's in your contract. You have to have media availability and stuff like that. So it's like, how is how would you, how would, you, how would people kind of like, people that just like, oh, I just don't feel like talking to the media, like F them. I don't want to talk to them. Isn't that part of your mental health though? Like, yeah. isn't that a sign that, I get you're just playing devil's advocate, but mm-hmm. isn't that a sign that something's going on mentally where you physically don't want to talk? But what if you're just an introvert and in general? that's your job? That's part of that's that's mental health. Yeah. If I'm an introvert and you're making me talk to the media every day, mm-hmm. it's like I'm I'm performing. Yeah. I, I'm doing my job on the court. Especially if I'm like a star. I feel like those stars should be able to put into their contract that they don't want to talk to the fans, that they they should be allowed. I think a lot of these athletes should be allowed to do their own interview process. Yeah, but I so, think that then the, the other counter argument is that you talking to the media boosts your, you know, your identity as an athlete and helps the NBA or tennis association or NFL to promote you as an athlete, which right. in turn makes the NBA money and then makes you more money as well. Also, I get that. Yeah. And the NBA, does the NBA want you to have a good reputation or a bad reputation? A good reputation. A good reputation. Mm-hmm. NBA wants you to be goody two shoes. It's yeah. not like, um, you know, the labels with these rappers where they want them to be bad. Like, I need you to go to prison. I need you to get pulled over. I need you to get caught in Paris with some weed yeah. to, like, you know, to make the news as part of their persona. Like, mm-hmm. they're still in the streets and they're still rapping about it. But athletes, they want them to be goody two shoes. Yeah. You want that, right? So, why would you, after, after I just got booed, so let's say I'm, um, I played for the Bucks and I just played in Phoenix, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Giannis, um, the whole crowd is counting up and down. Uh, I'm counting up to, you know, a number. Every time I shoot a free throw, I'm getting booed, right? Mm-hmm. This is how crazy fans is. There'll be a person that heckles me, boo, 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 you suck. I walk over there, he's asking for my autograph. Yeah. So now you got to deal with shit like that. Mm-hmm. You're getting booed the whole time. Um, you know, you, you, you just lost game two of your finals. They're ripping you on Twitter. That's if you're logging in on social media. Mm-hmm. You know, they're ripping you everywhere. You just had the game of your life, one of the greatest final games individually yeah. ever. And now the NBA wants you to talk to reporters. And ex- and they expect you to be perfect when 
on the flip side, they could say, how about we let the athletes control what they put out and say, hey, Giannis, you have to answer these questions. You get to answer them not on the fly. Here are the questions that are going to come up. And you get to answer them when you're back in your hotel room. You just have to answer these questions. Oh, that's I've never really heard of that solution. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's actually a legit kind of solution. W- wouldn't that be way better? Like, I just went through all this mental abuse. Mm-hmm. I just lost a big game. I know what everybody's thinking right now. And I have to sit down. And, um, of course, I get these normal, normal, normal questions. Yeah. And then here comes that one reporter like, hey, Giannis, uh, do you think Drew Holiday plays better with you off the court? Mm-hmm. And somehow I have to answer that. I'm mad as hell at the reporter for asking me, Mm -hmm. first of all. And somehow I have to answer that shit without dissing Drew Holiday, with making sure that I have my teammates back, making sure that I have my own back, and somehow get back at this reporter for asking this dumbass question. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you got it. All that entails in one question, like that's just wearing on the mental. I think another thing is that reporters <laughs> need to start asking better questions. <laughs> Fact. They ask the worst questions sometimes. It's like, are, are you serious? Questions. Like, how am I like, oh, did you guys come out and feel like you guys gave it 100%? Like, oh, you think I'm trying out, I'm going out there trying to miss shots? You think I'm going out there, you know, trying to lose? It's like, it's just like, so, such like rhetorical questions where you know, like, hey, duh. <laughs> or the dumbest question. It'll be like a game seven yeah. with any athlete. They'll be like, how do you like your chances in this game? Do you think yeah. you'll win? Like, what the fuck you think I'ma say? Yeah, like, oh, you're no. down, or you're down three one, you know, in the finals, and say, hey, do you think you, your team can make a comeback from this? No, I think we'll win one more. They probably gonna bust our ass game six, and we're gonna be out of here. <laughs> That's that type of shit. <laughs> it's crazy. Who but is this man? I do like that uh, solution that you had. Like, let the athletes kind of leave the arena, leave the the essence of like the stressors of like what they just got through, like yeah. whether it's a tennis game or decompress, decompress. But I think there should be a, a way that the athlete and the organization they are playing under come to an agreement. What kind of works best for, for both people. I think just saying, I don't feel like, I don't feel like uh coming to this interview. Cause you know, I just don't feel like it. That can like get a little, cause you're paid, you know, you're paid to do that type of stuff. Right. I but, get that. Part but I think there should be somewhere to meet in the middle because mental health is really important and we just, they should find a way to meet in the middle. I do like that solution that you, uh, you came up with cause I think, you know, it, it, it makes sense. Like leave the stadium, go to your room. Know right. the, knowing the questions before, like the reporters, they know the questions they're going to ask. Let them ask the questions. They just always want to ask follow up questions. But if you like, I just got done playing sixty minutes. Yeah, like, I ask your follow up. Put your follow. Be you yeah. Know, put your follow up question in there. You say so if he answers smart. yes or if he answers yeah. no, I want to answer this question. You, you know what three answers you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. Or and, let me just do it from my house and right. whenever so, I'm ready. Like speaking of like that whole, you know, the Giannis counting down, counting up thing. So mm-hmm. where they count every time for people that don't know. Every time Giannis shoots free throws at away stadiums, people count because he got a viol. It's, I think he's supposed to shoot it in ten seconds. Yeah, that's the NBA rule, but they never call it. Yeah, people go past ten seconds all the time. Mm-hmm. But a referee made a grave mistake, and I'm probably sure he got in trouble for it. He actually called a free throw violation on Giannis. Oh, I never knew that's how it started. Yeah, <laughs> so that's how it started. Everybody goes over every, yeah. every ten seconds. So. With that being said, would that affect you? Me, if I wasn't a good free throw shooter, I think for sure. I think, and I think it's in his head. Um, I haven't. He's hit. I've, I've never seen a superstar hit that many, uh, shoot that many air balls before, in a while. Crazy. You never saw Shaq yeah, play. Yeah, I know. I've seen. I'm talking about like in, in the media in, in things I say. And he's a really bad. Like he's a superstar right now. Like he's shooting air balls. It's kind of wild. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying in that point, I think it's getting in his head. I don't I don't think it's getting in his I head. I think it's different for Shaq. He's, he's a bad free throw shooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still think it's still getting to his head. Because with Shaq, it still is like, hey, I got these five championships. You can't tell me nothing, right? Giannis has, doesn't have anything yet. Right. His I think Shaq's outer shell 
mental state is better than Giannis. Yes, for sure. Like Shaq would airball a free throw, you wouldn't even see his facial expression yeah. change. Like Giannis airs balls a free throw, and he like grabs on the net and puts his head down. Mm-hmm. And it like you can the fan they like makes fuels the fans even more. They're like, ah, we're affecting this game. That's the worst thing you can yeah. do to fans is actually make them think. You ever been like uh, playing basketball? Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, and you wide open, somebody be like, he self check miss, yeah. you air ball. Mm-hmm. That happens right? all the time, yeah. But if you air ball, now that person is talking shit for the rest of the game. Yeah. The rest of the game. Like mm-hmm. he's not going to leave you alone because he actually believes what he said affect your, affected your shot. Yeah. But if you make it, he probably won't say anything. And I think it was, it was different with Shaq too because. That was an era where shooting wasn't really super proponent, you know. Everybody, right. the bigs are bigs, and and this in this era where everybody's shooting the ball, it's like if you've you seen a superstar miss air ball a free throw like that. It's kind of like a, but yeah, about the fans counting and stuff like that. It's like them boys are counting kind of fast now. It's kind of getting annoying. I'm not gonna lie. The one, two, three, four, five, six. It it's, like, it's a it's a fan engagement thing. Like if you can get your fans engaged, I think it's getting no, corny. N- no matter what. So like every time Giannis goes to the free throw line for an away team, they get like a celebration. They get a coming together of their fans, mm-hmm. which is you really. I mean, you got a startup chance defense. You know what I mean? Yeah. All that, but you got this automatic thing. This one, two, three. You know, people can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. People pulling out their cell phones. Yeah, that's crazy. Like counting and stuff like that. So, Sam, you think you can? Speaking of Giannis, you think you can score on Giannis? How many? Cha- like just period and like a going up to a, a twenty in twenty minutes. You think I can score one so, bucket on? So all ones. Uh-huh. You only can score ones. Going up to ten. And it's make it, give it. So basically, he's probably going to score on you every single time. So I guess you got 10 chances to score on Giannis. So it's not make it, take it? It's like... Just 10 chances to score on Giannis. If I, yeah. Every time he blocks your shot, you turn the ball over, it starts over. Unlimited dribbles on an NBA court. Yeah, I think I score a bucket. Crazy. <laughs> Like, why? You're crazy. I think shit. I can score one bucket. The thing, when when I stopped saying that, I used to say the same thing. Like, Giannis, if you hearing a- this, Giannis, if you hear this some miracle way, come on, let's play one-on-one. And this, I just want to see if I can score. I think I can score. I'll score one. One. One point up to 10? Out of 10. I don't think he's... Sco- I, this no. is why. This is why. He's going to think, he's going to, you know, I'm going to be going up and he's going to be blocking the hell out of my shit, right? Right. And then he's gonna like leave me open one time because he's not gonna like I don't want to guard this dude for real. I'm worth three hundred, bro. I'm he's, worth I'm he's worth a very three conditioned athlete. I'm worth three hundred billion. I'm not trying to get hurt playing this kid. He's gonna leave me open in his split act time. You better hope it go in. It's gonna go in. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna score one. He's gonna leave me open. You're that confident in your shot. Have you seen me shoot? So if you're so, have you seen? Don't tip. Have you seen me shoot? Yeah, I don't know why you would be that confident thinking. Have you score. seen me shoot? If though. Giannis gave, hey, you- stop talking about anything else. Have you seen me shoot? If Giannis gave, have you seen me yes, shoot? I've seen me shoot exactly, and I've been busting your ass for a while, right? That's not true, bro. You don't think so? How many times we play one on one? All right, this is what we're gonna do. Who wins one on one? Me. Answer that question. Me. Say swear to God. Swear. Say swear to God. I swear to God, I beat you one on one before. Yeah. Who wins the most? I don't know. I'm not keeping track. Exactly. What do you mean? I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna swear on something. Yeah. Okay. That, Anyways, <laughs> we we'll play one on one. Okay. We'll we'll record, we'll record it. it. Yeah, yeah. We'll go live right. and play one on one. Bet. All right. Bet. Set it up. All right. You're gonna get beat again. You always get hell beat. no. Last time we played, I beat you four games to zero. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. That's a lie. I swear to God. I don't care. I don't know. We just had a religion talk. I don't know what you believe in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you're so confident in your shot, yeah. All right. If I gave you 10 half-court shots, mm-hmm. right, you have to make one. You're actually pretty decent at half-court shots. That's shot. my shit. That's your shit. So I'm going to put it down to five because fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you got five half-court shots, uh-huh. right? If you make one of the five, you get a million dollars. Right? Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. You like that, chance? Yeah. One or five million dollars. If good. you go old for five, you spend the next five years in a North Korean prison. <laughs> North Korean prison. Oh, shit. Five and a hundred million? A million. A mil- only for a million dollars? What do you say? Only a million dollars? You Bro, got a million dollars? No, but a million only dollars. Only people that say, <laughs> the only people that have that's a million dollars. Mi- that's not worth a million. Only people that have a million dollars can say, only a million dollars? You, that's not your line. 
You that is my that. line. I'm just getting ready for the future. You getting ready for the future? Hey, <laughs> only a million. Only a million? <laughs> Ew. Ew. Shit on my face. Brokies. We sponsored by Wheaties. Brokies? <laughs> yeah, we wish. <laughs> It'll oh, make, no. this make This episode's probably going to call Wheaties. It'll make sense later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Ah. Nah, I don't, I don't, I'm doing it. Fuck it. You're an idiot, boy. They going to shred you in that North Korean prison. Bro, I'm, I'm about to hit it. You don't think so? No. I bet you. This, we should act in. We'll do this again for another video. What you want me? How we Hypo- bet that? How hypothetic- we bet that? Hypothetically. Oh. Hypothetically. No, I'm going to no take, five- take five shots. And- I, no, what I want is you take five shots. You miss the five shots. I want you to attempt to rob the nearest bank. And I want you to do your five years in prison. That's what type of shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find a crime that gets you exactly five years. Five years? <laughs> 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 we gotta look that up soon. Like probably, that's why we should need we need a dang producer on the show so he can tell us crimes that have at least a five year sentence. I know our producer got to be a little bit better. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you the man. You the man. So you should. there you go, whiteboard. <laughs> uh, all right. I guess we can get to why we have the weedies here. Or do you want? No, go ahead. Talk about the Wheaties. <laughs> right. I've been trying to have this as a, a topic. He every for time like three weeks. Every time we do notes, all I hear, all I see at the top is Wheaties good. Like, <laughs> bro, don't nobody give a fuck about no damn Wheaties. <laughs> so, if for the only the, our audio listeners only right now, um, there's a box of Wheaties has been sitting on the middle of the table for the whole episode with Muhammad Ali. So if you listen to this audio, this is a chance to go to our YouTube channel, Crash Dummy Podcast, and subscribe so you can kind of see what we're talking about here. We got some visuals here. I like here. that. I like that. Slip that in there. So yeah, you know, shameless plug. So my theory was, I always see these athletes come out on e Wheaties boxes, right? Right. I'm thinking like, all right, would I want to be on a box of cereal that's ass? All right, and then Wheaties don't look like it's good. It's like there's no sugar on it. There's it looks like a super brand. It seems like old people cereal, but athletes love being on it. I if me personally, if I was an athlete, I want to be on the box of like Lucky Charms or something. Put me as the you see James Harden. James Harden's like a he has his own trolleys of gummy bears. You know, does he? Yeah, I want I want stuff like that. I, I want to be on, I want to be on stuff like that. A That's box hard. of Wheaties, even though this is the great late. Muhammad Ali on this box, but I still think these uh, Wheaties are shitty cereal. I think it's just iconic. It's just iconic, but it's a terrible cereal. So I don't want. If you're an athlete, don't want. Don't get on Wheaties. So I'm gonna do a what? taste. Why would you tell somebody hey. not to live out their dream? Hey. Everybody's dream is to be. So on the I'm box gonna of taste these Wheaties live on air, and I'm gonna give you guys my real reaction to it. So we're gonna cut to us having the bowls in our hands. All right, we're back. All right, I have oat milk because I don't drink regular milk. This shit looked terrible, bro. I didn't. <laughs> I think the first thing I was wrong about is was it that... expired? <laughs> the expiration. Date? This the shit first... looked like old scabs from somebody <laughs> me. <laughs> the first thing I was wrong about, I thought Wheaties were like a square, like square, like squ- like squares. I didn't know they were flakes. What are those? Uh, raisin brands or something like that. No, um, you're no, it's not raisin brand. It is Wheaties. I think it's just different type frosted Wheaties. I don't know. They, they have look- frosted Wheaties. This shit look like uh <laughs> All right. I'm about to eat a bowl of skipping rocks. <laughs> I don't have regular milk, so let's see. What type of milk is this? Oat milk. Oh, I'm man. lactose intolerant. I know I drink almond milk. I don't if you still drink if you're a grown ass <laughs> man and you still drink milk, <laughs> you're nasty. All right. So here is my first bite of Wheaties ever. I was wrong. <laughs> They're not that bad. <laughs> this is probably terrible for the audio listener. <laughs> They're hearing us just smack on cereal. <laughs> isn't, isn't it like a phobia? Like somebody probably got a phobia. I'm hearing like. <laughs> yeah, bro. Why you do that shit? <laughs> They probably season up right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me stop chewing. I didn't need one bite. Bro, they can, your mic is loud as hell. <laughs> All right. Wheaties. 
I apologize. We underestimated you. I'm not gonna lie. That's not that. Bad. That's really not bad at all. Mm-mm. I see why athletes want to get on the box at Wheaties. That that because it's an iconic box. You wrong. I was wrong. That was not a bad. <laughs> that's actually not that bad. I would actually eat these. This is yeah. the type of cereal I like. Yeah. I like the the plain kind of cereal. That wasn't bad at all. I don't know. That's why you just don't believe everything you see on the internet. Then you know. We need to do a better job of making the cereal look like put some strawberries or bananas in that shit to make it look more appetizing. But it's oh. not a bad cereal. They're classic for that. I like that. <laughs> it's like a bunch of dried up biscuits <laughs> in a <the> bowl. <laughs> you like the oat milk? Huh? You no, like the oat milk? Fire. Yeah, I told you. Hey, oat milk's the wave now. I might, get it in my coffee and everything now. I might have switched to that almond milk in a little old. I don't, I don't know. I fell out of love with almond milk. You did? Yeah, I fell out of love. You were in love with the milk? I was in love with almond milk. All right. Just throwing that word out there, huh? So I know everybody's heard the story mm-hmm. of Zayla Avant-Garde, who is the first African-American to win the script spelling bee, the national spelling bee mm-hmm. that you always see on there. Yeah. Okay. So what I also didn't know is she holds like, I don't know if it's one, two, or three, you know, but if it's three records. Mm-hmm. Uh, Guinness World Records. Yeah, I saw that. It's like jug- dribbling. Yeah, yeah she's crazy. like dribbling on a unicycle. One of them. It's like can she's, she hoop. She can hoop. Oh wow. <laughs> she can hoop like legit hoop. Uh, she's in middle school and she can like she hoops like really really well. Like she looks like a she look like for sure it's gonna be Division One. Oh, you dang. can tell already. That's dope for somebody to be that skilled. I uh, saw somebody um in the comments at ESPN saying um like dang this this uh. This has been um, dominated by the Asians for a long time, and say, and somebody else, somebody commented under that and said, "Yeah, and the Indians too." <laughs> I was like, "India's in Asia, you idiot!" <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I'm an idiot too. I'm looking at you. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> oh man! But it would. I'm not gonna call everybody that looks like they're. They might be Indian, Indian, but it has been dominated by um, a lot of foreign. People with foreign descent. I don't know. Right. I'm, not, I'm not trying to say the wrong thing, but people that I would think are Indian. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. That's crazy though to like be in a spelling bee. Mm-hmm. Do you think you would do well in a spelling bee? I think I made one spelling bee and I was terrible at it. I did. I did. I did actually well. So I wanted to start a segment called "How Bad Can Mike Fuck This Up." <laughs> All right. Well, so name. this is this is always going to be my my random segment where I ask Mike um, fairly easy questions, but okay. questions that he, I expect you to go four for four here. All right. Are, there, there's like literally no word over. Like there's no big words. Okay. It's only four of them. All right. Are you going to mean like the noun, adjective, any, and, any, and origin and stuff? No, like that? I'm not giving you that. These are <laughs> these are words that you use every day. Okay. They're super simple. All right. All right. See how bad you can fuck this up. All right. The first word is rhythm. (laughs) I know how to spell if I'm writing. (laughs) Hey, 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 you know how. (laughs) Holy shit. You you ever been taking a test in college and you open it, you see the first question and you just laugh? (laughs) You're like, boy, I'm about to fail this bitch. Rhythm. Okay. Dang. See, the, the thing about me, I rely so much on uh autocorrect and stuff like that on the dictionary yeah just when i'm typing i just type the wrong word on purpose kind of i just go back and just click right click it rhythm r h t wait oh no no r h y t h m e r h y t m e Damn boy, you just that only that last word don't even make sense. That boy spelled all right time. <laughs> what the oh hell? Oh my that? god. When soon as you say rhythm, bro, I just might blink. I know, brain. I see. You was, you was, you got the first one wrong, your brain game. <laughs> like fuck this. As soon as I heard it, I just knew there was like a H and a Y and a T in it. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucked. How do you spell rhythm? You know what's crazy? I didn't know how to I, I learned how to spell rhythm from my a uh, sixth grade music teacher because she got us all with the same question. And <laughs> oh, yeah. She was like, if you ever forget to spell rhythm, sing the H's. Mm-hmm. So you go R-H-Y-T-H-M, rhythm. So I spell rhythm? 
R H Y T H M. R H Y T H M. That's what I said. You said T H M E. Oh your, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <Rather me. laughs> okay, next word. You should get this one. Nausea. Who shit. N A U S E A. Ding ding ding. ding. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Hey. I see, you. I see you. Nigerian child of Nigerian board in school. Let's for get one. it. Let's get it. Y'all learned about this one. Okay. That one's tough. Third one. So you one for two right now. All right. All right. Handkerchief. 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 What? <laughs> it says handkerchief. What? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said handkerchief. I don't know. I don't know about that. You never used a handkerchief? I, I wouldn't trust you with pronouncing anything. <laughs> I, I'm American here. <laughs> it's not even English. English is not even an American language. What is it? British. I know. Handkerchief. <laughs> Anchor chief. That, that just gives me a little hint. I know. I gave spoke. you kind of a hint. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> handkerchief. <laughs> I've never used the word before. In Nigeria used handkerchiefs a lot. Really? Yeah, you need it because it's always hot. But people in Miami use it. Ah, ah okay. That makes sense. Um, H A N K E R. Oh shit! Hanker. Fuck! I give up. You, you like your brain just like yeah. <laughs> it's H A N D K E R C H I E F. Yeah, that, I wouldn't have got that. And I've used a handkerchief before. I just never written. So you were over there that whole time. They never made you. You were just special. <laughs> than everybody else. <laughs> You didn't have to use one. Dang. Hey, props to those kids, though. Prob- that, that's what Spell- I'm saying. Bro, spelling is not easy, especially when you have to get on stage. On the spot. And you're a kid. Like, How can you study? I guess you have to just study the origin of the word. Yeah. But it, it sucks to um, spell anything in America because we have such a broken language. We just steal from everybody else's <laughs> language. But I guess the question is, how come the spelling bees are only for kids? Is it just because it's a kid school activity? There's not like an adult. It's not like an adult uh, spelling bee. I feel like, yeah, I feel like the adult spelling bee will go too, go too far. Like, there's so many people out there at that age yeah. that can just spell. Spell really good. It'll be like a five-day event. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially because, like, in your adult life, you don't really have to worry about, like, school and all that stuff. So, it'll just be dudes that just literally study words. Yeah, they study <laughs> words their whole life. And it wouldn't be as interesting. I think it's just it's so interesting seeing a kid spell, like... Encyclopedia, some big word. Well, I, mean, I said a encyclopedia. Yeah, that's a big word. If you think word. about it, America is fucked up. Like <laughs> we don't have a competition for adults spelling, you know, which mm-hmm. is something that's you know a part of intelligence, mm-hmm. right? But we haven't won for a fucking hot dog eating contest. <laughs> <laughs> like we got the Glizzy Gobbler. What's his name? Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> we got Joey Chestnut. The Glizzy Gobbler, the mm-hmm. champion, who ate 75 Glizzies over the July 4th weekend. Yeah, July 4th uh, activity. I th- How many hot dogs did he eat? Uh, who thought of that? Uh, 75, I think. No, 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 no. It wasn't 75 that day. Was it? I think it, it might have been. I'm going to look it up. But yeah, they also had um, a lemonade. I'm mad I'm looking up hot dogs on my Google. <laughs> Is it going to change your whole algorithm? I know. <laughs> You're going to start getting Oscar Mayer uh, ads on Instagram. Welcome back, Glizzy Gobbler. Here's what we got for you. Because it was like it was a certain amount of hot dogs under a minute. So I was thinking it was like 12 or 13 or something like that. Breaks on us. Oh, that's, that's in the New York Times. God damn. <laughs> but yeah, 4th of July activity. It's uh, 76 hot dogs. And what? And under what? In 10 minutes. Ooh. That's a lot of hot dogs. I can't even eat one in, in, in a year. Bro, that's not, that's not a pause moment. I don't think I've ever eaten. I don't think I've eaten a hot dog in maybe 12, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I steer away from hot dogs. Thanks. I don't like it. After I worked at the Johnson, <laughs> after I worked at the the Glizzy Factory, the Johnsonville, Glizzy, yeah, Johnsonville Sausages, 
after that, I was like, nah, I I was never. It, I was like aligning the sausages with my hands and shit. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not going down that route. They had the lemon. That they brought a new event. They said oh. they said, how can we make this event more interesting? Lemonade, n- lemon. Oh, at the God, at the high, hold uh, on. Let me say lemon. La- l- Lemon late. Holy shit. Lemonade? Lemonade. Damn, boy. <laughs> Lemonade. <laughs> oh my goodness. Lemon lemon. Le, 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 le. Lemon lemonade competition. <laughs> so they have a lemonade uh competition. You saw that dude? Yeah. He was big. shaped like Mark Henry. <laughs> <laughs> that boy was big. Big as hell. And man. he was going against somebody next to him looks super small. <laughs> <laughs> it literally looked like Timon and Puma. Or who next comes to each up other. with it? It's just like, let's well, it's not that I don't even feel like who eat hot dog and lemonade is that a combination? I wouldn't even I mean, yeah, summertime, both summertime yeah. foods. I guess lemonade is easier to to chug though, if they did like a, a Pepsi product or a Coke. <laughs> I'm sure he would like regurgitate on yeah, the crowd. It, would, it, it probably wear, wouldn't be that fun. You gotta wear like a rain poncho mm-hmm. in the front because he might throw up on you. That was an opportunity. That should have been an opportunity for a liquor company to sponsor a chugging competition. But they probably don't want nobody plastered and plastered on <laughs> oh, national TV. Oh yeah, and it's kind of dangerous. You don't want to promote people like binge drinking. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Way to way to cover your ass. <laughs> So 76 glizzies in 10 minutes. And then I do, I think, I don't know, I, there probably was a gallon of lemonade. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see how he was, like, he had, like, did you see what he was doing after every drink? Mm-hmm. Like, he would drink for, like, he smoked a dude. I think he was done mm-hmm. when the dude was only halfway done. So yeah. that's how fast it was. And it was, like, pretty fast. Yeah. It's, like, probably under two minutes, I would think. Mm-hmm. Whole gallon. That's why we need to, we need to get a producer because he could just pull up the TV and we're watching it in real time. Facts, 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 <laughs> facts. So he had, I mean, he got like five extra stomachs. Like mm-hmm. when they showed like the side of his body, he had a stomach right here and a stomach right here and a stomach right oh, here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I think he was going, ah, oh, and switching to that other stomach. <laughs> He's switching gears, second gear. Ah. Oh. Yeah, America, we have the weirdest competitions. Weirdest. Like, con- not a grown man spelling bee, but a grown man glizzy and contest. Yeah. And then. Followed by. But Lemonade. Russia does have slapping competitions. I like that. <laughs> More like ooh, girth. That's what should be on TV. Why did I say that? Why'd you say girth? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why'd you say girth? I meant like manly strength. That's what comes to mind. <laughs> it's girth. <laughs> Bro, I caught myself. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm getting too invested in this stuff. Anyways, wait, wait. We you got one more word to spell? Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah, that was only three. So you're one one for three. Yeah, you one for three. Okay. Uh, spell the word misspell misspelled yeah like you misspelled that last word which you actually did m i s s p e l l misspelled ed correct that was an easy one hey that's when i googled it they say that's a misspelled word is misspelled oh, I, wow. i'm guessing because people forget that like, don't matter it spells that wrong if you're in the car and you spelled that wrong i know shame on yourself. shame pull over shame. pull shame. over right now <laughs> pull the fuck over <laughs> all right that so the other day right mm-hmm. i was uh i was talking to my sister right yeah so you're not responding you're just doing this like i'm like what the hell is he doing it's weird because like when i'm even talking to people i don't know something something since i was a little kid eye contact sometimes even though i'm listening it seems like i'm looking like this way and then I, i'm listening but just tell your story sat down because you, ta- you take dramatic ass pauses sometimes. i do i do i do i do it's a weird bad combination <laughs> that bowling shirt throwing me off though it's a it's a nice little chinatown market. chinatown that's expensive oh we're not gonna say the name they're not sponsoring this oh yeah 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 call it, cancel this obey too yeah but it's a crash i like the bowling shirt. shirt i like the feel of the shirt but yeah Look like you bone a, a bowl of mean ass 285 300s 300s yeah no you so- cannot bowl but okay. I know that for sure. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so I was talking to my sister and 
we were talking about um, laundry. Mm -hmm. So I live in a complex where I got to do my laundry outside of my place. Lived? No, that you got to do your laundry outside of our place. Like your laundry is in your basement. Mm -hmm. I have to do my laundry at a community laundry thing. Like I share it with three other people. Oh, you talk about your apartment? At my apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What the hell wrong with you, man? <laughs> I thought you talking in the past. So, Go ahead. <laughs> I was telling, I was on the phone with my sister, and I was like, "Damn, if these people don't hurry up and do their damn laundry." Mm -hmm. And then she was like, "That sounds like something a Sagittarius would say." And I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? <laughs> like, why do people do that with zodiac signs? <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about?" Oh, you woke up this morning. Yeah, you must be a Cancer. Cancer. <laughs> Cancer's always waking up in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you definitely a Capricorn. Is you breathing right now? You a Capricorn. I can tell by the way you breathing. Like, oh, you drink water? Taurus. To definitely a Taurus. <laughs> Them Taurus be, mm-hmm. You can't do nothing. You trip out the door. He clumsy. Yep. Yeah. He is Sagittarius. I know he is Sagittarius. Look how clumsy he is. So I know I'm a Sagittarius, right? Can you actually look up like- We're both Sagittarius. We are. Which is funny. Look up the qualities of a Sagittarius and- Let's see if it matches them. Because the thing about it is like- I feel like they just say the most general things and it relates with anybody. They're like, oh, you seek inspiration in, in random things. And like, oh, yeah, I do. So, seek so it. everything we need to know. So <laughs> these are the Sagittarius best traits. Okay. okay. Sagittarius are optimistic. Okay. Yeah. You're optimistic? Yes, I, I would say so. Damn, they're right on point. <laughs> wow. wow. Optimism. Oh, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> they're lovers of freedom. I like being free. Uh, who doesn't like freedom? You. <laughs> yes, I do. How? You were at a, on a plantation. <laughs> <laughs> you just told everybody you were slaves. That, so you might not be a Sagittarius. We're hilarious. <laughs> hey, they on point. Ah, me either. They're fair-minded. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> Honest and intellectual. <laughs> okay. You know, you know somebody reading this like period. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. <laughs> <laughs> they are spontaneous and fun, usually with a lot of friends. Who doesn't want to think they're fun right. to be around? Who wants who <laughs> doesn't so want to think that they have a lot of friends? Yeah, it's so general. Like eight, I would say 90% of the, the community the, the society would think the same thing. And are perhaps the best conversationalists in the zodiac. We are doing a podcast. Hey, they own the song. <laughs> All right, now they wait, 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 wait. Last one. They tend to inspire the people around them to live their best lives, which I don't. <laughs> like, if my friend call me and be like, "Hey, bro, my girl just cheated on me," and be like, "Damn, you gonna cheat back?" <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not about to sit up here, and, bro. You are the best. <laughs> Nobody bro. should be treating you like that. You are. You're worth the, way more than that, bro. Way more. No, bro. You got to get of even. Fish. There's plenty of fish in the ocean. Don't worry. It's her loss. <laughs> like, bro, she didn't get you nothing for Valentine's Day. Put sugar in her tank. <laughs> All right. Now, th this is how generators. Now, look up another uh, Zodiac sign. And let's see if it's still. Do you know it? Anybody? Um, I don't know. Just look up any. I just want to see if it still relates to. I feel like it can relate to me as a person. It, let's, look up a um, shit capricorn capricorn let's see let's see no what let's capricorn. do leo leo's okay leo qualities male so well, it differs before you, it, it's the difference when it's your male and female yeah i guess so oh shit <laughs> <clears throat> he's a man's man and a ladies man as well <laughs> <laughs> that's the first line <laughs> What the fuck does that mean? Oh my Jesus. <laughs> He's charming, passionate, creative, uninhibited, and always on stage. He's also a good humor guy, which they said we were humor. Well, yes, everybody's just humorous. So pick one. <laughs> Is it us or them? He's always busy in playful social life and is gifted with charisma and sexual magnetism. Oof. However, Girth. however, He's also a competitive guy who's driven by a need to be and have the best of everything life has to offer. Wow. That sounds like, like every ours. other one. <laughs> they just rewording, they just yeah. wording everything different. And then they, they get, are tricking you. 
and they just give people the most. We're like, okay, we're going to say they the funniest. We're going to say they cry the most. We're going to say that they the most trustworthy. Oh, look up the worst qualities of a Sagittarius. Why? I just want to see what they're saying bad about us, too. Oh, about <laughs> us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to see if... I'm just trying to know, be in the know. <laughs> the crazy thing is, like, when you type this on Google... I just go worst qualities, and then the first thing that pops up are zodiac signs. People are, bro. People are really invested in zodiac signs. Invested, like think there's of like, apps. There's apps for you pay month. You pay monthly for the apps, yeah, and this some thing. of them are free. Yeah, and they put something like if you got a Twitter, you ever seen those like abandoned Twitter pages? Yeah. and then got like their horoscope that comes out every day, mm -hmm. and it's like your Sagittarius, you will go through a lot of untrustworthy stuff this week, <laughs> and the person just be looking for some shit. <laughs> I see Jeff hating ass over there. <laughs> My horoscope told me about you, Jeff. All right. Let's see. This is why we need a producer. We do. He, he would already have this out. <laughs> yeah. Positive. I got to go to negative. Wow. This is a... We're impatient. Okay. Huh. We're blunt. Okay. <laughs> Overly accommodating. No. Disorganized. Uh, debatable. Flighty. Flighty? The need for constant change. What's flighty? They saying like, we, we take off. Like, because <laughs> we need change. <laughs> flighty? <laughs> oh my goodness. We flighty. Flighty, okay. Flighty. I'll add that Stubborn. Back. Who's not stubborn? Conflict avoidant. Who likes to go for conflict? Like, you're never going to feel like you're in the wrong. Maybe it was the Leos that like the conflict. <laughs> <laughs> Unfocused. What? Wait, they just said we're, we're driven in the first one. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. They let them talk. <laughs> Picky. Overly serious. But the, uh, the other one just said that we're the most humored. What the hell is going on? So I, it just probably go off like what, like when you having a bad day, people be like, let me go look up what my worst per, uh, qualities are. Oh and they find gosh. them. Like one of those are going to like pertain to you. Those are so general. So general. It's like, like you say the most general thing and it relates to everybody. Now it's the, the truth. The truth. Man, freaking Zodiac signs. All right. Fuck, um, fuck them. Fuck I'm going to get into our fan favorite. Um, Segment. Would you rather? That was hard. That was really trash. All right, whatever. All right, start it off, Pat. Would you rather fight twelve duck-sized horse or one horse-sized duck? No so, weapons. So twelve duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Yeah. So I'd, a I'd big ass duck or 12 medium horses. I'm going to go with the duck size horses. The little ones? Yeah. So you could just kick it? Yeah. I think this is this is fairly simple. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, duck, I don't like ducks. It, I'm afraid of ducks in general. If I saw a like, duck coming at me, a normal duck, I'm running like, away. Ducks are vicious, not yeah. a big ass duck. Yeah. I got bit in the butt by a goose before. A goose? Yeah. <laughs> At a farm. Freaky ass goose. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh, no, you weren't with me. Um, I went on uh, Intro to Bio at Lakeland. Mm -hmm. I took that my freshman year. It was required. You had to take like one science thing your freshman year. Mm -hmm. So I took Intro to Bio with Jeannie Lord, and she took us to her. Dang, he's just saying people's whole government names. Jeannie Lord. <laughs> and... Uh, she took us to her like farm. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a rescue farm. Okay, and it was like these these ducks run or these geese mm -hmm. running around. And then she was like, "When a geese like runs at you, stand your ground." Mm -hmm. And it's crazy how like how it works. Like the first person the geese ran after, they took off, and the geese continued to start you know start plucking them back of the calf muscles, start plucking on their back and stuff Bro, like they that. Don't play. But if you stand your ground. They'll stop like right in front of you. They don't play. They'll bust your shins open. There's freaking turkeys around in our neighborhood. In this neighborhood? Yes. That's I was crazy. walking um my dog Duncan and walking around the neighborhood and I saw I thought it was like a somebody statue. I was like, oh, some just a turkey, a turkey statue. I woke up as two turkeys. They just turn they turn around in unison and start looking at me. Like, 
Like, all right. Sometimes walking straight, thinking they're gonna cross the street. I get about this close to each other, like the distance between me and you, and they didn't move yet. They're just staring. I was like, all right, these turkeys, <laughs> I'm gonna just go around the around the street. You know when you're walking down the street, you see some crazy shit happening in front of you, you just cross the street right just away. Cross the street right away. <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> I just I was like, hey, you got it. <laughs> I ain't gonna I ain't gonna fight you on that. Oh no, I ain't gonna fight no turkey, especially with another animal that you gotta worry about. Yeah. It's a thing, like protecting yourself. Versus like a wild animal, but like having somebody else to protect. Yeah. Like, we should, uh, again, some people might be here from TikTok and there's still an ongoing argument about the bear oh with this sword. Oh my God, give it up, bro. <laughs> that shit got like over a thousand comments. Like, give it up. We Nobody cares. You can't wield a sword and you can't fight off a wolf. You die either way. Hey, I actually have swords at my in my room. Go get it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Just keep them company. All right. <clears throat> How y'all doing? Welcome to Crash Dummies with Just Pat. Uh, Mike is going to go get his sword to prove to our TikTok viewers who are in this big argument over. A lot of them said that he he picked to, that he would use a sword to kill a bear over fighting a wolf with bare hands. So he's coming back to prove them wrong here. Um. We're not sponsored by anybody, so we can't put any sponsorships in here. But watch where you point that shit. Bro, don't do that. Oh, my God, bro. All right. You can't even see my face. Let me see the other one. So if you're a bear. Let me see go. that shit. Why am I so little? Pause. <laughs> if, hey, this is going to be a good... I don't know. I grabbed the mic. Dang. But, but this is going to be a good uh, thumbnail for... <laughs> just pointed, pointed at the... Hold on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hold, oh, put the mic back on. This one. All right. We got to put the thumbnail. One, two, three. Bam. Now we got the thumbnail for our YouTube video. So, yeah. That, that conversation is still ongoing on our TikTok after... Three weeks and people are still arguing. That's our first ever. People that haven't beat up their bullies at their school saying they can beat up a wolf <laughs> with their bare hands. Dude, you got to accomplish Derek that's beating your ass in between <laughs> third period first. <laughs> and then everybody says a sword has to be heavy. So you're thinking if I have this 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 thing right here, I can't just. <laughs> yeah, you're an idiot. If you yeah. think you can kill a bear with that. With this? Now that I'm actually seeing the sword, I'm positive that I would fight a wolf bare hands. Over fighting over a having a sword. sword, yeah, for oh, sure. Man. And now that I see, like, there's like this is dull. Bear. This, is a, this is a dull sword, though. This is a dull sword. I mean, it don't matter. It don't matter if it was the sharpest of the sharpest. A bear is knocking this shit out of your hand. Oh my goodness! All right, my stand is about to fall. I'm just gonna hold it like this for the rest of the podcast. We're about to wrap up anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Anyway. Yeah, it's over. Now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of Crash Dummies Podcast. We really appreciate all the support um, we've been getting. I got a shout out. Go ahead. Because on the last show, um, we talked about uh, our one viewer in mm -hmm. South Korea. Yeah. And I know who it is. Who is it? It's my friend Zoe. Oh. She's in South Korea teaching right now, and she's listening all the way in South Korea. So my friend Ellie told me. That and I was and I laughed super hard because I knew somebody that was in South Korea and it never came across my mind that it might be somebody we know. We just assumed that it was just a random person. Oh, shout out to Zoe. Shout out to Zoe. But again, shout out to everybody too that's just been supporting us. Um, yeah, we shout got reached out to a, a, a big, pretty decent sized company, a big a big size company we for sponsorship. Yet, though, yeah, right? we won't name them yet. Okay, good. Uh, but until because we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> But they reached out to us for sponsorship and they've seen our content and it's because people like you guys sharing our stuff. So, yeah. so uh, shout out to uh Ares who who shared our stuff. We we we're not big Facebook guys though. We I'm didn't not wanna, at all. Yeah, he's not at all. <laughs> and we didn't want to share it on Facebook. We kind of just wanted to put it out there and whoever saw it saw it. Yeah. And obviously we got this like we got crazy attention, something that we never even thought would like on be TikTok. possible, yeah. especially this fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in two weeks to have all these followers and subscribers and stuff like that. And just so, us talking. Yeah, we're not we're not manufacturing anything. It's, yeah. it's just we've been friends for over eight years, ten almost close to ten years now. So So shout out to Ares. We that. just enjoy doing this. This is stuff that we do we do off mic anyway. So it's like why not bring it to Yeah, we do mic. this crazy. Like we have conversations <laughs> like this all the time. So. <laughs> These exact conversations. So yeah, thank you for listening to uh 
us and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not subscribed. And um, yeah, this has been episode four of Crash Dummies. Peace. Cuarto.